move them over here. And now they're just homeless on the streets. On the streets, nowhere to go, trying to get back. Many of the more recent homeless here in Honolulu came after receiving a one-way ticket from the mainland. This is paradise. So I was like, well, I'd rather be in a warm state than a cold state. While this may look like paradise, the reality is that it's far from it. As homeless people from the mainland take one-way flights to Hawaii, they arrive here to find violence, drug addiction, an overwhelming lack of resources, and an unexpected hatred for white people. But who is shipping these homeless people here? Do they want to return to the mainland? And how is life on paradise after they've gotten here? I flew here with my friend and homeless expert Kevin to find out and quickly noticed countless tents strung out along the beach. Even though this is beautiful and it feels great, yeah. you're never really going to get your needs my hair. You live on this beach as well? Yes. I try to watch out for some of the women down here okay. because they get hurt. As you know, these people down here, they do a lot of drugs. I've had people come from different parts of this island all happy and everything like that and they don't know the people down here and what they're capable of i've watched many people get beat up and hurt it's not very safe why is it dangerous let's say for instance you guys were staying down here now okay, okay? things like that that camera he's carrying yep. these things anything that looks like it's money i've seen so many i've warned people so many times well it's interesting i mean we're standing literally in the middle of a paradise and what you're describing definitely is not a paradise. No. That mountain has a lot of them. Wow. Okay. Really? Yes. Okay, we might have to go see what's going on over there. Oh, yeah, but yeah. please be careful with you go. Appreciate your help. Well, you guys were having a conversation. Two guys over there rolling up like that. Eyeballing the heck out of us. There was definitely some uh, drug activity. He's approaching us right now. Notice our camera. And Logging. Yeah, and now he just took a photo of us. Yo. All right. Are we on the hit list? After narrowly avoiding getting jumped by a fentanyl user, we made our way towards a mountain rumored to house homeless people tired of getting their tents swept off the beach. Definitely not the smartest idea to just get out of the car, go past the fence that's clearly barricaded, government property, no trespassing. We're about to go to the secret homeless camp behind this mountain. We are going to trespass and check up on these people. Let's go. We're gonna do a quick peripheral scope of the environment here. Be aware of our surroundings just a little bit. Let's walk and also let's keep an eye on our six. How you doing? Can you describe maybe some of the, the challenges being homeless out here? The challenges are the, the, just trying to get um, resources, getting okay. um, basic needs, daily needs, water, food. Do you notice uh, a lot of people out here on the beach struggle with drug dependency or anything like that? A lot of them have been in this situation for a long time, their, their entire lives, so they're born into homelessness. You know okay. I mean? A lot of them. It's part of the culture, the, the drug use, I mean, alcohol, meth. Marijuana is rampant, I mean, it, you, see, you see a lot of damage, people come out here, damage, I mean, sexual abuse. Uh, Do people come in here and take your tents away? They used to come in and sweep, give you, and normally if it, if it's a sweep, and a lot of people have a lot more stuff, then it takes more than 24 hours to get, you can get moved. Uh, more than a handful of cases where people have had loved ones, ashes in their camps, and the whole thing's just been put into a, a, a container. And how often would this camp move? It's been almost two years since. <laughs> it's been almost two okay, years Okay, so that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool setup you have, by the way. Yeah, Tim, with we, uh, continue to walk around, brother? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it seems like this is the spot to be if you want to live uh, somewhat secluded. How you doing? Live over there? Yeah, in the back. What do you need? A housing. Some place to stay. I mean, okay. give them the first run, and if they mess up, that's on them. Do you think a lot of people would succeed in that situation? That's on them. So right now, what are you using? A little bit of water and uh, weed. So water and weed? Yes, sir. That could be a lot worse. What do you think is holding you back out here? Life. Okay. Life on its own terms. Everybody gets their own problems, yeah. People are violent? Well, get some people who do, do the drugs and they act weird. They can't handle it, you know what I mean? My name is Sean. Basically, a while ago, I trusted my godmother. I basically screwed me over. Okay. Took everything. And how long have you been here since? About... Almost six months. But this is my mom's tent. Kim this is my tent. So, I mean, we've seen a lot of people with just holes in the dirt on the beach. This is a kind of a luxury setup out here with a beautiful Thank view. You. How long do you plan on staying out here? As long as I have to, I guess. What's the plan, if any? There is no plan. You guys love it. It's beautiful. It's paradise out it. here. This is paradise, but I grew up, there would always be people that know us. Today, I, I'm 31 and I walk the street, it's empty like hell. Why is that? Ain't nobody. Where'd people go? Good question. Is fentanyl running amok out here? What's, what's going on? I'm guessing that's what's killing us off. Do you use? Yeah. I can only speak for myself. I okay. use meth, sometimes it's more cake, cocaine, okay. weed, and tobacco. Okay. Do you have, like, a, are there a lot of dealers out here on Oahu? Yeah, some, but most of us just give out each other out of Aloha. But it's hard to find Aloha nowadays. 
What do you mean by that? Look around. So the community, Where's the sense of community has been lost, you think? It's been lost for a while. But I give you guys credit. It takes a hell of a lot really? of us to do what you guys are doing. Why is that? Not just make it sound as a threat. Yeah. I ain't going to jump you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're a YouTuber. You should know the risk by now. That's heavy. So is that why you're so secluded out here and you chose this camp? Yeah. To be away from people who are dangerous? To be away. Look at that. I got chicken skin. What does that mean? That means I'm happy because people oh. actually care. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, that's powerful. Oh, so you're, you're getting goosebumps. No, it shows that not all white men are bad. Okay, so is that a recurring like thought out here? Yeah. People are afraid of white people? If you listen to our music, who is the one man we hate on in our music? White man. Exactly. Is it because of the history of Hawaii out here? Yeah. I'm here to say white man is not all bad. We... Thanks, brother. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. What percentage of people that are, that are homeless out here come from Hawaii versus come from the mainland? It's town that get the, the mainland homeless. Okay. Apparently, downtown Waikiki is where people from the mainland get shipped to on a one-way flight from whatever city they're from. So, we headed there to find out if this was really true. We see some camps over here. We've noticed that some of these people don't even need tents to sleep. Weather's so nice out here. A lot of people are just sleeping on the grass itself. Kevin, you were here almost two years ago. What are your thoughts? Has this changed? Seems to have gotten worse. I would say there's about 50% more homeless, certainly in the Honolulu, Waikiki area. I don't know why, so we're gonna go talk with a few and, and see what we can learn. Climate-wise, it's a great place to be homeless, but for every other reason in the world, it's not. Sure. It's expensive, there's really no running water. So we're seeing a lot of shopping carts, a lot of tents, but also people on the ground itself. This is a, uh, obviously it's an old park now used as really a small homeless encampment. How, how did you end up here? Hey, you know, it Divorce, got out of plane. Where are you originally from? Illinois. And you've been here for 10 years? About, yeah. Almost. Have you ever tried to get out of here? It's not so easy. Uh, no identification. That's the biggest problem. Did you have your ID stolen from you? Yeah, yeah. Do local Hawaiians that are homeless out here get mad at guys like you from out of state? You do realize they hate white people, right? Can yeah, you explain yeah. that a yeah. little bit? Man, they had to have somebody to blame, so they blame white people. Sure. You know, uh, have you experienced any of that out here? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's more than you could ever imagine. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And are you seeing an inflow of homeless that come from other states that come to Hawaii either on a one-way plane ticket or, like you, just sort of chose a different de destination and got stranded? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, you do see a lot coming from, from the mainland, but... Uh, they all got they all got different reasons, you know. Different, uh, mm -hmm. you know. You expect the weather's gonna be nice, and, and you know you expect people are gonna be nice and whatnot. And they think things are gonna go well. And, but, See this, we've heard a lot of people often get swept or moved. Oh, yeah. Is that common? Oh yeah, every every day, every week. You know, at least at least once a week, usually twice a week. They uh, they come and they, they'll take everything people own and then give them tickets they can't pay and take everything that they have. Okay. You, know, uh, you said they get tickets to where? Tickets to court. Oh, to court. Yeah. Do people end up in jail. Well, yeah, you can end up in jail. I mean, uh, have you been arrested? I've been arrested, yeah. Stay safe out here, yeah? I think they're nodding out to our left. Dude's on the floor if you look straight ahead. An underlying tension here going on here in on Oahu between the native Hawaiians yeah. and basically white people. With an underlying tension between the locals and the mainlanders that get shipped here, I went closer to the tourist epicenter of Waikiki to see how many homeless people were stranded here and where they originally came from. We're on the other side of the island, far more touristy, but nonetheless, despite all this money, there is people chilling, sleeping, living right on this beach. Looks like a local just on, asleep on the ground, flies on him. Uh, where are you originally from? Originally, originally from Jamaica, the island of Jamaica. Lived in Connecticut for a couple years and then I came over here. And what brought you to Hawaii? Well, I was going to be homeless in Connecticut, so I was like, well, I'd rather be in a warm state than a cold state that, you know. Did they give you a plane ticket to come here? Plane no, ticket? I bought, my I bought my ticket. I didn't know I could get one. Okay. And you've been here for how long? Oh, eight months. Do you like it out here? Yeah. Is the goal to get into housing at some point? Eventually, yeah, okay. but you know, I'm just taking my time to see how it goes. Did you put up a tent tonight? No, I don't have a tent. So you just uh, sleep in a sleeping bag? Um, no, I have like a, um, a blanket and stuff, I sleep on the sidewalk. Right and now. is it relatively safe out here for you? For me, yeah. For you? You're a bigger guy. <laughs> but like, well, <laughs> you... My takeaway is a lot of people come here and they're like, eh, if I end up on the streets, it is what it is. But 10 years later, you're still here. You're and stuck here without enough resources to ever escape. Are you from here, Hawaii? California. Okay. What do you think is drawing people out of state here? They're drawn to the idea of Hawaii. Okay. I want to be in a paradise. Uh, I'm, I have trauma. I'm struggling. Uh, I think that the ocean and the beaches are going to make me feel better. They come here and realize this is a rude awakening. 
I'm not really getting services. Housing is too expensive. Housing wait lists are forever. There's really no fresh water. I mean, people are just suffering out here. The climate and weather is so nice out here. You can literally just... Yeah, you don't need a blanket. There's a general lack of friendliness out here, and it's just, it's tough, and it's sad. On top of this general tension out here, mental illness was common, and certainly wasn't helping people find their way out of this island. Are you from these parts? Are you from here? any information for you. Okay. The Doctor Secret Service DOT headquarters. Okay. Oh, the IRS? So he's got some paranoia, schizophrenia. I thought you were the CIA. What, you think I'm the CIA? Hi there. You want to share with us really quickly what it's like to be homeless in a while? Yeah, yeah, I've been here a hundred years, and y'all know who the fuck I am. I'm definitely young, and y'all been living off me. I've been on radio. How do you get that thing out of my face? Okay. Okay. See you. Okay, so Kevin, what's the diagnosis? Serious mental health issue. Oh, after and the first I, and, I, and I wish we had a place to send them. Would you be willing to tell me a little bit about your story and how you ended up here? Okay, my story's way different, and I'm telepathic. Okay. And please don't think I'm crazy, because I'm not crazy. No, no. Your telepathic abilities, do you have telepathic abilities? Do you uh, hear other people's voices in your head? Uh, you in the bathroom and kind of hear maybe somebody talking about you or talk, you know? No, no, I've actually never experienced that. No, like uh, it's not vi it's not visual or hearing, audio, it's inside your brain. I can hear my own voice in my head. My oh. voice, it sounds like my boyfriend's voice. Interesting. And, and, but I can also hear other people. And I've gone up to them and I'm like, you know, you don't have to tell me, but did you say this and do you say that? And they just look at me. I actually came from Texas. Okay, where in I Texas? I moved from Illinois actually. We left the island and came back, and ever since then I've been homeless. And that's when I started smoking meth. I never smoked okay. meth before until I was 48. And I started having back problems, and I got addicted to pain pills and fentanyl. Fentanyl was a patch that I wore. So I was prescribed by a doctor. Never did it illegally. Have you noticed that more people are out of state and not from the mainland they than- They send them over here. And they told them that they had housing and a job over here. And why these people didn't call, I don't know, but they actually even bought their airline ticket. They flew them over here. So the city bought tickets for yes, these people to live here homeless. They, bought, they told them that they would have housing and jobs and bought them tickets over here. When they got over here, there's no such company. And now they're just homeless on the streets. On the streets, nowhere to go, trying to get back. Things are so bad. Have you noticed there's nobody out? Go to Chinatown. Yeah. There's nobody. Things are bad, and yeah. it's gonna get a lot worse. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you. I mean, I know she'll deny it, but clearly there's some some schizophrenia, right? A lot of mental health issues. At a point of clarity, she's like, people are being sent here. One-way plane tickets. Homeless people are being stranded in Hawaii. What's up? Yeah. What's the biggest drug out here? Gambling. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a gateway Who is that right there? Is that weed? Is that? Nah, yeah. This is just. It's a quality. What? what about you cook something on TV? The nature. <laughs> he looks like yeah, Gordon Ramsay. After meeting countless people stranded here from out of state, we encountered something peculiar on our way back to the car. This is interesting. We got uh, people living in tunnels in uh, Honolulu. Uh, you want to climb down? I'd say so, yeah. Do you live in this tunnel right here? I, I've stayed down there like three or four nights by myself because it's easier to be on down there with the four legged rats than it is with two legged rats up here. Rats up here steal your stuff. You know what I mean? And are you originally from here, Brenda? No, I'm from St. Louis. It's part of my job. Okay, got it. Do, Brenda, do the water levels rise often? It's very fast. Very fast? All right, Kevin. You heard it straight from the source. And while Kevin began exploring the tunnels, I met another person stranded here. Where are you from, Kevin? Uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. Oh, so you're from Alaska. How did you get from Alaska to here? Oh, uh, I did the flight to uh, Portland, Oregon. Spent a couple of years in uh, therapy okay. in Portland, Oregon due to some issues, um, but then came here. Didn't stop ever since. And you've been in Oahu for how long? Uh, I've been on the streets now 22 years. Are most people out of state like you? Yes. While Kevin finished exploring the rest of the tunnels, I met someone above ground who recently had escaped the Maui fires, fled to Oahu, and was one day away from receiving transitional housing. Where are you from originally? Originally, I'm from Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. And how did you get here? Oh God, it's a long story, but um, I was actually married for a very long time. Uh, my husband asked me where I would live if I wanted to live anywhere, and I said Hawaii. Okay. And what started off to be a dream turned into a nightmare. Basically, we've been struggling since before the pandemic. I left Kauai hoping to look at the market in Maui. I, I left on the 7th and ended up in the fires. He burnt my purse. Look. Oh, wow. so you came from Maui? 
And then you got on a ticket to came here? Yeah, I, I came from Maui to here. Oh my and, God. Um, I looked down, my purse was on fire, and I was like, <laughs> trying so you were in the middle of the flames? I was. I That's was, very I was scary, running. I imagine. It was very scary. I don't know where I'm at. I'm lost, and people aren't very nice anymore. It's not That's like... That's what we've noticed, too. There's yeah. not the aloha we saw in Maui. No, it's not. Um, it, it's, it's very... Um, it's not like, you know, you're going to help Grandma across the street with her groceries anymore. Now you're going to beat her down, and you're going to take them from her. Sure. So. What happened to the community out here? I don't know. People are very inhumane, and they're very cold, and they're not empathetic, or they're not even caring to put themselves in someone else's shoes. I spent last night on the sidewalk out in front of housing because I told them I'm going to be there every night until I get this done and I got it done today. That's Congrats. Incredible. No, that's... Thank you guys. I and just... That's amazing, right? What happens to someone not as persistent as you? You just end up on the streets the rest of your life out here, you think? Yeah. You end up a statistic. I've been to the hospital several times this week wanting to take my own life, wanting to end it because I just... I, I'm very close. Get in tomorrow, and this is as far as I push right now. I, I don't have dog food for her. I don't know where I'm going, and um, I'm sad. Even though I feel like I've accomplished something, I'm yeah. so sad. What if we checked you into a local motel tonight? I would be like in heaven. I Let's would do be it. Like in heaven. Can we make that happen? Really? Uh, yeah, that get means your homelessness ends right now. Yeah. Because you're going to a shelter tomorrow. This is, I think this brings a lot of Thank hope to everyone. Thank you for letting of me course. do this. Yeah, of course. I'm so happy and for I, you. And I will just say this yeah. much. This life is not for me. This yeah. life is not for anyone, really. Yeah. This breaks your cycle of homelessness forever. Today, right now, is the last moment of your homelessness. If I can do it alone, anyone can do it. You just got to know that it's going to be the hardest damn thing you've ever done. I just want to be happy again. I just want happiness. Jump in, sweetie. Go, go, go. There you go. There you go, mama. All right, mama. All right, Melissa. Wait a minute. Lexi, come here, baby. We did it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at this. Look, mommy. Oh, mommy. Oh, mommy. Oh, there she goes. Ah! <laughs> now she'll come alive. Now she will come alive. We're excited to see your future. God. Get some nice dinner, too. Oh my God. Bless you guys. Thanks to Melissa's perseverance, she received housing the next day. And step by step, she's working to rebuild a happy life for her and her pup. If you see someone in need, a small act of kindness might go a long way. Subscribe.